Hello, testing, one, two, three, uh, trade shows, 2020, 2021, come in. The NAB show has been canceled. Infocom probably will be canceled. So many in-person events have been canceled, but live streaming is incredibly powerful right now. I think you should subscribe to our channel to learn more about it. But what I wanna talk about today is live streaming and creating a hybrid event where virtual attendees can upgrade the live stream experience, collaborate and share, break out into small focus groups, and really what I believe the future of live streaming is, which is what we were planning at the 2021 NAB show. Fortunately, it was canceled, but still I want you guys to benefit from a month of planning that I did to try to create what I believe would have been the most engaging, awesome live stream possible. All this and more coming up next. So this right here is a tiny little action camera from Sony. It's the HDR AS300. It's super popular for IRL live streams, in real life streams. And here at the Stream Geeks, we love IRL, in real life, mobile tours where you can take your audience directly into the action and teach, show them things that you'd never be able to show with a regular kind of live streaming system that's set in place. So the plan for the 2021 NAB show, and hopefully in April in 2022, was to have IRL streams with a Live U backpack. This Live U backpack has cellular bonding technology. It actually combines, I think, up to seven cellular connections together to create a really high bit rate, high quality live stream that we can send up to the cloud. Now, what you'll see right here is that our plan was to live stream the backpack to the cloud but also live stream an awesome session from our booth. Now at our booth, we were gonna have almost 10 NDI cameras set up for different various settings, many of them PTZ cameras that we would allow to zoom in and have a really great multi-camera production from the studio floor. And using the cloud, we were gonna use Easy Live. We would be able to switch from a mobile tour of the NAB show exhibit, then back to the trade show where we could have commentators, we could have opening of the box videos, multi-cam production, and that was sort of the plan. Plus, we were gonna have a Zoom meeting session so people could upgrade their live stream experience and join us, collaborate and share, have breakout rooms and et cetera. So that's the first part of the setup. Let me show you the booth and show you kind of the tech behind what we were planning. So here you can see the tech kind of behind what we were planning for our booth. We have multiple PTZ Optics NDI cameras, which we were gonna use with vMix that would give us PTZ camera control, 1080p, frame, 30 frames per second video, and we were gonna switch between multiple cameras to do opening of the box videos, uh, podcasting, and I'll show you the audio setup in a moment, but from a noisy showroom floor, we thought we had a great plan. Now, we were going to take the output of the vMix system and use an Epifan Pearl, which is an awesome encoder recording system that would allow us to have a touchscreen system, really kind of having redundancy in our setup, and you can see that in the diagram here. Now, one of my favorite parts of this system is the backbone, really the networking switch, which allows almost all of the devices to be powered over Ethernet with one of our Netgear switches, which would have been configured with an NDI profile, so everything would have been smooth, easy setup. Another piece of technology that is indispensable when you're doing stuff like this, you see that we have two monitors. Both of those monitors were going to be powered by Magewell NDI to HDMI decoders. What this could do is take the output of an NDI screen capture or an NDI output from vMix and then display it on one of those or both of those monitors with the HDMI output of this decoder. So this was gonna power those two displays. 
and we were gonna show a Zoom session up on one screen, we were gonna show the output of the, the video production on the other screen, and that was kind of the video setup. Let me know if you have questions about that in the link below. Let's take a look at the audio setup. Now the audio setup, we were gonna power by a Digimix 18. This is a digital audio mixer, which we could output either via Dante or via USB to get it into the multiple places that we needed. And this digital audio mixer was going to be connected with our Audio-Technica BPH-S1 headphones. These are really great headphones and we were gonna create a mix minus channel for each guest. So basically we've got a microphone, which is XLR, and we've got a quarter inch audio output as well to bring into the headphones. So the, the plan was to have one for the producer and one for each guest. So the producer could talk to the guests, the guests could talk to each other, but no one would hear themselves back in the headphones. That's what the Mix Minus does. It takes a mix of all the microphones that you need to send to a pair of headsets, and then it minuses out your own audio so you don't have to hear your own voice. That's what our digital audio mixer was going to do. Plus it was going to send a mix into vMix so we could capture all of the audio that we needed from the showroom floor and broadcast that out into our secondary audio mix. We also wanted to use Dante for audio because that would allow us to send the audio into our other systems that I'll show you in a minute. We are going to use a neural net system to bring in, to have a kind of guests come in throughout from afar because as you know, this is a virtual hybrid experience. So we wanna bring people into the show and the neural net system allows us to bring in 1080p video from our guests, have a screening room. We were gonna have a green room so that someone remotely back at headquarters could actually kind of screen the guests and make sure they're high quality guests for the show using the neural net system. And that's the audio. But wait, there's more. All right, so obviously we have a live stream. And this live stream is in the cloud, okay? So we live stream one stream to the cloud, and then the cloud can deliver that live stream securely to YouTube, Facebook, we were gonna do LinkedIn, and also we were gonna do Twitch, and potentially we were even gonna stream to the NAB show has their own a system called NAB Amplify. So the cool thing about the cloud is everything is redundant. If something happens to our stream, the backpack, the LiveView backpack fails, whatever, we have a redundancy in the cloud. So these streams with YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, and the NAB show all remain consistent no matter what happens. That's so important for a high profile event. The other awesome thing that we can do with Easy Live in the cloud is we can clip, I'm just gonna write clip here, we can take little clips, maybe it's a 15 second clip, maybe it's a one minute clip, maybe it's a whole segment clip, and we can live post that to YouTube, Twitter, all these different platforms. So we're, we're really getting the most out of this event, right? We're posting to Twitter, we're posting to Facebook, just clips, sending people back to the main live streams, which was generally going to be YouTube. And by the way, this is the live stream from, let's say, vMix. There's also a second stream from the backpack. That's that live view backpack I was showing. So we've got multiple streams going, we've got redundancy, we've got backups. All of that's great, right? Well, that's awesome. It's a hopefully a highly engaging one-way live stream. We would even have uh, Lindsay Pope on our team, the social media person. She'd be walking around with her smartphone, reading the chat room, and relaying the chat room messages directly to our team so that we're completely collaborating and engaging with the live audience. But we wanted to offer even more. So we've got the in-person experience, and we've got the virtual experience. I think the virtual experience is gonna be great, but somewhere in the middle here, we need to really collaborate. We really need to find out what is the true hybrid experience, and that is where Zoom comes in. That is where Zoom events specifically allows us to create an event that not only gives people the ability to turn on their cameras so we can see them, but open their microphones so we can talk to them. And in this area of Zoom, Zoom events gives us a couple different things. One is a, a chat room lobby for the event. 
So I don't know if you've seen that yet, but on the right hand side, there is a chat room for your lobby. That's even before the, the meeting or the webinar that you're scheduled starts. So we've got a nice little image for our event. We've got some details about the event and then at the right time, which for us was gonna be 2 p.m. Pacific, the, the interactive meeting that really is part of the live stream, we're live streaming this, but it allows people to join the Zoom meeting, turn on their cameras, open their microphones and collaborate. Now, even with inside that meeting, you can have breakout rooms. And I wanna explain why breakout rooms are so important. You've got one big meeting for an awesome event and people are joining for that, but you may also want to break out into smaller focus groups. And what smaller groups allow people to do is have a higher level of collaboration. You only have two ears and you only have one mouth. The smaller the groups are, the more conversations can happen within that one meeting experience. So we had designed multiple different breakout rooms to give the online viewers, the audience, to not only upgrade the live stream experience, but dig down into specific focus groups that would really help them get the most out of their virtual experience. So that is why we planned it this way. If you get any questions, let us know in the comments below. So I'll be honest, I'm a little bit bummed that the 2021 NAB show has been canceled. Comment one if you're excited for in-person events to come back. Comment two if you're super excited for virtual events to allow you to stay home but be more connected to the events that are happening in person. I do believe in-person events are gonna come back stronger than ever. There's pent up demand for us to collaborate and meet and share and get hands on with technology and all kinds of different innovations that are still happening all around the world. So let me know what you think the future of virtual events are. I hope you learned something. I've actually got a blog post below where you can download my book, The Virtual Ticket, which I outline a lot of the details of what it's like to plan virtual events. And I hope it's helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.